We all rely on farmers and ranchers, but farming is riskier than other businesses out there. Crop insurance helps farmers manage their risk. With crop insurance, farmers put skin in the game by paying premiums and shouldering deductibles. That keeps taxpayers from having to pick up the whole bill every time disaster strikes. Today, about 90% of U.S. farmland is insured, providing $100 billion in protection to more than 130 different kinds of crops. It's a testament to the program's success. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Executive Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And in D.C. this week, we got a better idea of the leadership picture of the uh, the House Agriculture Committee for the next two years. Uh, that, of course, being the election uh, officially within their respective caucuses of uh, David Scott of Georgia to be the committee's next chairman, and uh, Glenn Thompson, uh, known as GT in some circles, uh, to be the top Republican and the ranking member on the committee. So I, I guess, Phil, we'll start with uh, with Congressman Scott. This is a guy that's been uh, been around the Ag Committee for a while. Uh, what do we know about uh, about him and, and his priorities and, and how that might shape uh, committee work here in the near future? Well, I think one of the things you need to look at is the regional uh, impact on the regional breakdown. As we all know, regional issues are more important than partisan issues when it uh, partisan differences when it becomes comes to farm policy and in the agriculture committees both the house and senate and interestingly i think with uh, with david scott you have uh, a bigger background in uh, poultry poultry being a major um sector in georgia uh, some other similarities though um uh, if you if you look at the differences, not so much with if, take all four uh, positions here. We have two people who retired: Mike Conaway of Texas, former chairman, now ranking Republican, and um, Colin Peterson, the now chairman who lost his reelection race. That's who David Scott will uh, replace directly. Um, but uh, Georgia also uh, hustled a major, the second biggest cotton producing state after Texas, which, uh, which Mike Conaway was from. So you got that, that southern region, some of those commodities still, still represented, that switched parties, but uh, still represented. And of course, uh, we have a, a switch between, uh, uh, in, in the northern representation between Colin Peterson and uh, uh, Glenn G.D. Thompson from Pennsylvania. We can talk about uh, Thompson. Scott also has a deep interest in the historical black colleges and universities, been very interested in, in those issues as well. Expect to see uh, those concerns elevated. And I think we'll see also he has a passion for the nutrition uh, programs um, at USDA. We're certainly going to see a switch in direction there with uh, David Scott as the chairman of the committee and, of course, the incoming Biden administration and whoever uh, uh, the president-elect um, places as uh, secretary of USDA. Well, and it's interesting to note, uh, you know, obviously you pointed out the, the kind of the great sea change that we're going to see in foreign policy leadership here uh, very, in the very near future. Of course, uh, we, we full well expect that John Bozeman uh, will chair the Ag Committee in the Senate, uh, of course, from Arkansas. So it's we're setting ourselves up here for uh, two Southern chairmen and two kind of uh, Northern slash Midwestern, uh, I guess you can't really call Pennsylvania Midwest, but uh, certainly two more more Northern uh, ranking members. And and Thompson, again, is a, a very familiar face uh, within foreign policy, certainly someone that's been around the Ag Committee for a while, was actually the vice chair of, uh, of House Ag during the uh, 2018 Farm Bill deliberations. Uh, so that's, you know, you know, certainly some some carryover priorities from, from the GOP side of the House Ag Committee we can expect from Thompson. Yeah, nobody's uh, happier about uh, Thompson becoming the ranking member than uh, the dairy industry, milk producers, because they lost a huge ally in Colin Peterson who had... Uh, uh, been deeply involved in dairy policy his entire career because of where he was uh, from Minnesota. Um, now that's uh, going to fall on uh, G.T. Thompson, um, comes from a line of dairy farmers in uh, Pennsylvania. So he's going to take on that mantle. So he's switching from a Democrat to Republican, but uh, you know, similar, um, similar, certainly going to see a similar interest on uh, dairy issues, dairy policy. 
and of course, uh, Senate uh, Ag Committee Ranking Member Debbie Stabenow will be uh, will be staying in place. So the we're we're getting kind of a, a better picture of the the so-called Big Four in in farm policy on Capitol Hill. Uh, still awaiting news from the Biden transition team uh, on uh, their pick for the next Agriculture Secretary. Of course, as as soon as we know more, you will as well on that subject. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, again, a, a clear picture emerging on some of the next uh, next generation of leaders in, in farm policy and, and just what that might mean in terms of their priorities, their efforts here as we go into this uh, this next farm bill deliberation process. But before we let you go, do want to also uh, touch base on uh, a big subject that we've been following for months, uh, really since the uh, passage of the of the CARES Act, it was pretty well acknowledged that there was going to need to be more uh, coronavirus relief at that time. And here we sit in early December, uh, waiting on that next round. Uh, of course, the House has passed the HEROES Act, the Senate has uh, taken up some measures as well that uh, ultimately have not gotten across the floor. But uh, Phil, seeing I mean, dare I say some some measured signs of optimism uh, from from Capitol Hill or or at least acknowledgement that, you know, COVID relief is something they want to address this year? No, I think there's some definite signs of uh, optimism Um, started uh, this week with the release of this nine hundred eight billion dollar proposal from a bipartisan group of senators, which uh, it's important to note includes uh, about 20 billion dollars for agriculture. and $10 billion for broadband and about $6 billion for nutrition assistance. Uh, That seems to be the focus of all the attention on the Hill right now. Um, President Trump indicated he wants to sign something. Uh, We know that Speaker Pelosi and uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had a discussion yesterday uh, on Thursday, indicated that they uh, wanted to make progress of something and we have some Republican senators um, indicating support for something like this uh, bipartisan proposal of $908 billion. So we'll see. Time is very short. Of course, as we know, Spencer, a lot. it's amazing how much gets done when you have a deadline uh, uh, looming. So we'll see. December 11th, uh, next Friday, is when uh, the government uh, runs out of uh, runs out of funding unless uh, they pass another stopgap bill and it's possible they could uh, uh, pass something uh, very short term, maybe a a few days or a week, uh, whatever, to give them a little more time. But right now we still have that December 11th. This would probably get all wrapped up together with the spending spending legislation for fiscal 2021. So we'll see. Right. There's uh, one of my favorite sports analysts to follow on Twitter uh, always has this joke whenever there's uh, up contracts uh, coming up uh, against the deadline. He always jokes that deadlines spur action. And, uh, <laughs> I think that's a phrase that uh, that could definitely ring true on Capitol Hill as well. Absolutely. And so these uh, these next couple of days, we're certainly going to be keeping our eyes on the state of play on COVID relief and, and where that stands. Obviously, the government funding picture uh, needs to be clarified at some point in the next seven days uh, to avoid a, a uh, government shutdown. Uh, also, keeping an eye on news from the Biden administration, uh, any kind of uh, white smoke emerging from Wilmington, Delaware, on uh, who the president-elect would like to lead the Department of Agriculture uh, during his tenure. So obviously uh, a very busy month of December uh, here, especially a busy uh, second week of December uh, up ahead. And we'll be sure to keep you up to date on all of the various uh, twists and turns uh, at agripulse.com. But I think that's going to do it for this week. So for Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.